Hello, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this PACT video short, we're going to cover PACT processes case studies. PACT is an acronym. Performance-based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven, training and development of any blend. The PACT processes case studies include cases for AT&T network systems going back to 1986, a project that was intended to address the needs of 1,100 product managers in the old Western Electric Group. This particular project resulted in an eight-day learning event for these product managers that revolved around a series of simulation exercises that related to the life cycle management requirements and a functional model for the product managers that included their responsibilities to do financial analysis, market analysis, engineering analysis and planning, manufacturing analysis and planning, sales analysis and planning, etc. This next project was for Bank of America in 1997. The training and development paths were put together based on three sets of content after the initial analysis was done and the best of the best was cherry picked from the three sets of content and where there were gaps those were prioritized and then developed. The implementation of this training and development path and all of the content that supported it reduced turnover in the teller ranks by 30 percent. At the Materials Fabrication Division, the Tool and Die Supervisor College design was an 18-month program with one week in the classroom and then one week on the job over the course of 18 months. We used the PAC processes at General Motors to design the training and development path for those 18 months and to prescribe the learning objectives and the content configuration for the one week in the class as well as the task assignments for the next week on the job so that we could marry the practical application in the real world immediately after time was spent in the classroom. There was also other work to be done by these new supervisors. However, they were supervisors in training and they weren't really supervisors until they were finished with the 18-month program. This effort won a Chairman's Quality Award at General Motors. This next project was for Siemens Buildings Technologies and was to support their time to performance for critical field positions. This was a highly successful project and won an internal president's quality award at Siemens Building Technologies. Another project at General Motors done in 1999 involved job re-engineering, taking two jobs and creating a third job in the middle. This offloaded less sophisticated tasks from the more sophisticated job and offloaded the more sophisticated tasks from the less sophisticated job into this middle job. This reduced the cost of performance and increased the capability of this middle job to actually get the job done. This project resulted in a 360 to 1 return on investment for the $500,000 investment. You can do the math. At my client Bandag in 1998, we used the MCD methodology to build a material flow workshop based on the book The Goal to increase the productivity and reduce the waste involved in their shop operations for their franchise dealers. After the first shops were trained in the pilot session of this course, they were producing 30% more product at a 20% cost savings the very first week back on the job. For Verizon in 2001, 
my organization produced a curriculum architecture design for seven different regions. We reduced training at each of these seven regions that exceeded over 80 days and brought it back down to closer to 40 days for each region. We increased the shareability where there had been none across all seven of these regions, which had differences that were necessitated by the Public Utility Commission's allowing them to either bundle, call waiting with call forwarding, etc., or to not bundle that. And to, they established different pricing and such, which necessitated the differences in mostly the product knowledge and the policies and procedures that reflected the codes and regulations that were imposed on them. What was core and common and similar across all of these paths was the sales model that this was all built on. In 2003, I did a project for the Norfolk Naval Shipyard for both the supervisors and zone managers in their production area. This effort resulted in the first time that formal training was organized for these two target audiences. The genesis for the effort was the impending retirement of vast numbers of these current performers where it was estimated that the average length of time and experience was going to drop from 25 years per person to just over five years, and that was going to happen within five years. And there was a great deal of worry about the productivity and the quality of the work that would be impacted by this loss of experience, and that necessitated the development of formal training and development to speed performance capabilities of these target audiences. In 2004, I did a project for Eli Lilly that followed on the heels of a Six Sigma effort. The Six Sigma effort, while producing a vast amount of data to commonize the processes here for global clinical trials across all of the countries that the organization operated in, but it did not generate enough detailed data about the enabling knowledge and skills that the performers would require. It did generate what the process required of them to a certain level, but we found it necessary to take that even one step further to identify the micro tasks that people would have to perform in these new common processes, and as well as deriving the enabling knowledge and skills, and then building the content to support that. I hope that this video short and the series have been helpful to you in helping you to establish a practice of performance-based training and development, learning and knowledge management. I have been conducting, writing and presenting on these methods since the early 1980s. My recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in much greater detail.